Well, here we are at uh, TBL version two, uh, the, Bl the Blitz Creek Legend. I'm uh, playing for the second time, uh, playing the campaign, and uh, the main reason I did that is because I had an excellent time with it, and I really felt like uh, there were lots more things to explore, and I have found that, that is the case. Uh, it's turn four, so that's 10, 12, 15, 16th of May, and it's the beginning of the Allies' turn. And they've uh, rolled well for uh, replacements. The French are getting some replacements. We roll a 12. And we have 10 or 12 uh, SP coming in. And we have a significant number of problems. So it's going to be uh, another challenging turn for the French. Uh, the last turn, the Germans were really stymied by their inability to move supply efficiently to where they needed it have headquarters in the right place with enough range to throw what they could and uh, roll awfully on air and combat. So with all that in mind, let's have a look at the, uh, the board and just to show you the difference from the first game and this game, you'll see how things have played significantly differently, I hope. So <clears throat> uh, firstly, in the north, the Dutch held out for a full uh, three turns. They surrendered last turn at the end of the third turn. Didn't really make a big difference. They did manage to get one attack in, which forced a retreat and opened up uh, access to some much needed supply for some of these guys here so that they would not uh, fail their trace rolls. Uh, the, this corridor that I used last time through Eindhoven from Rawmont here through Wurtz this way up through Breeder, that thing is just, you, you know, I put, I'm, every, every time I play this game, that's what I'm going to do. You know, it's, you, you basically can cut supply and have uh, units from third panzer exactly where they need to be to enforce the surrender conditions on, uh, if not the end of the, well, not the end of the first turn, but certainly the end of the second turn with double play. And uh, you can you can really clear that out very very quickly. That's and it's very cool to do that. Lots of fun. Uh, <coughs> so anyway, that's that's the Dutch. The Dutch are out. We we've got them on uh, in place for another turn or so, and then they come off, and then I'll we'll let us go around and scurry and collect up a little bit of SP. But we're not uh, we're not too badly out of uh, you know what we need. So here. Uh, we had originally uh, started to drive just as we did last time towards Boom here and looking for a plug, to try to plug a way through there. It had no success whatsoever. Uh, the, the, obviously, the French were, were well aware of what was trying to be done here. And in fact, they bled their defense very thinly here. And if the German player had have been paying attention, he would have realized that he could have perhaps had a shot at trying to take on uh, Antwerp, which would have been pretty difficult. I mean, these are, you know, mostly heavy city hexes and stuff, major city hexes. And first motorized is still over there as well, uh, providing some reaction force uh, capability. In fact, that needs to be flipped over from last turn to unfueled. And the British stepped in and, uh, you know, kept their line pretty solid. The Dutch were spread very, very thin and also uh, did not uh, reinforce Liege as strongly as last time and really tried to play a game here of trying to stretch out the, the Germans a little bit and see what could be done. Really, in, in, at any point in time, if I wanted to spend the, the supply, I could knock out all these guys. They're really weak. Uh, and with 20 attack factors attacking two uh, in defense with uh, three on their uh, effectiveness rating or action rating, they're, they're really not much of a challenge, particularly if we put a little bit of artillery on them. Artillery plays a big part in this game, uh, much more so than some of the other games that I've had a little bit of exposure to. Uh, and the air, certainly, air war, I've played that a little bit better this, uh, this time around. Lots more interaction between the two air forces primarily with uh, the very aggressive fighter sweeps going out initially for the Germans and uh, the, the Brits and the French held their forces back a little. Uh, 
that's a really tough choice actually. Uh, I think they're probably better off just going, going for it, hell for leather. Uh, but more when the Germans get around this area where they're, they're stretched a little further. Uh, so we'll see, I don't know, that's my current plan anyway. I've got, got a decent line of uh, aircraft waiting to engage at some point back there and still have some uh, forces here. So the Ardennes, so the Ardennes is really where can, you can make or break the game for yourself as the Germans. Uh, let's see what happened here. The, the random placement was different for the Belgian unit. It was uh, smack bang in the middle of uh, 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 you know, key road crossing. That slowed things down a little bit. Terrible rolls along here to try and get to this to Sedan and the Muse this way meant that uh, very weak attack across the river and you can still see this. I've got some units here, but the the, the uh, French piled in here, uh, attacked aggressively, uh, used their artillery aggressively, and we ended up uh, the Germans ended up uh, really thinking twice about doing that. Uh, pushing to try and make that same hole as last time. And I was in fact quite interested in trying to uh, uh, trying to get through this area up here around the Nun. So rather than just focus on one area though, I did actually manage to push across over the course of two turns here, uh, which has just happened this turn in, in strength. You know, there's a lot of units here. We've got GD, the Grosse Deutschland is here and elements of 10th and 6th and uh, more of Kleist's guys here. Second Panzer was in here. Uh, this is fifth Panzer, seventh Panzer. So we pushed a lot of forces into here. Had some awful attacks here. Lost uh, two or three battalions of units of one regiment. Reserve moved the 13th up uh, this turn. The French had a great uh, a great defensive plan here. I think they used Artie effectively. Any stack that moved and ended up adjacent uh, was properly attacked with a minimum of 26 artillery factors, sometimes 50, uh, 52. Uh, very effective. Didn't really kill a whole lot, but uh, certainly DG to monster stacks, which, you know, they're pretty useless for a turn after that. So, trick I have learnt with this game is that you can't really march up and be adjacent, you, you need to be marching through. Uh, so I have one unit adjacent and then march through whatever's there in overrun mode or, or then move adjacent in combat and hopefully you, you've dg their reserve stacks, which is what I did here. The second motorized was here, the French forces, big stack, there's 20, 30 uh, uh, combat factors there waiting to pop, uh, you know, plop down on somebody and give them a whooping. Uh, so we dg them, preventing them from uh, being responsive to our attack here. That was awesome fun. Now, over here, we've crossed over here. We, we kind of snuck across the river here and there and got some decent factors and took this fortress here. So I've got a crossing here. I've got a crossing here with the second motorized and 13th motorized and elements of uh, 10th Panzer. And then we've got this large crossing here, this freeway. And all that's standing between me and the green pastures beyond uh, these uh, headquarters in this CAV, uh, what is that, an MG battalion, assuming that's the direction we're going. I'm clearly not going to rush in to fight uh, through these fortresses. So, uh, there's that going on in the Ardennes. Uh, lots of units in reserve here for the French. Uh, another stack here of units waiting to you know, get into the action. Uh, second armored is here. One of these guys, that's third armored. So they're, they're poised to do something this turn. I'm not sure what. I didn't really clarify what was going on here. So we saw this gap. There was a, a really a, a pretty significant gap here. And uh, the, the British and the uh, Belgians had underestimated just how far I think the, uh, the units can get in a turn. And so we barreled through uh, all the way to here, I think. Then we overran a unit here and then barreled down to here, popped a uh, MG battalion adjacent to a HQ and an RT. That was kind of hitting back, sitting back in, uh, this is uh, Jean Bleu, uh, I believe that is called, or Gamblau, depending on where you're from, and uh, killed that unit. That cleared that route and allowed us to, in our reserve mode movement in the exploitation phase, bring uh, the SS uh, folks up here to uh, Charleroi. 
which is a key hub. They actually currently have all of this out of supply, but that'll get fixed this turn. So different approach. So now I'm, I'm trying to come, the Germans are trying to come this way and just uh, encapsulate these guys and try and uh, cut them off and bleed them out. And that will probably allow the British to make a, a move away unless, unless uh, the Allies, uh, sorry, the Axis uh, forces have other plans. They may decide to do something different. Uh, but I really need to get these forces out of these woods, pushing this direction so that I can just envelop all of this and begin the mauling. All right, that's my little, uh, it was supposed to be a short update, but it uh, turned into a longer one. There was quite a bit of activity down here too. Uh, the French did a good job for a couple of turns in, in making this uncomfortable for the Germans in terms of their movement, which kept them off uh, uh, some of the higher speed roads and some of the more convenient routes to provide supply but at a pretty significant cost. They lost a lot of cavalry units and a lot of forces were put in to put out a supply like these guys are here. Anyway, that's a, that's a wrap on the 16th. Uh, it's the Allied turn and we'll see what happens from their turn four.